Hello! In this video, you will learn about segmentation, or in other words, how to divide your volume into separate regions of interest. The colorful parts of the pocket watch here represent different regions of interest that have been visualized and are now ready to be used for all sorts of deeds and purposes. Segmentation is not only useful for visualizing parts of a whole, as shown in the pocket watch, but also frequently used to define regions for analyses. Imagine you want to quickly test the settings of an analysis. Running preliminary iterations on a small sample region can save you loads of time as opposed to calculating them on the entire part. The region might then look like the one up here. Or you might only need to analyze parts of your scan anyways because it's made up of different materials and you're only interested in an analysis of, say, the aluminum and not the steel in the scan. Regions of interest, or ROIs, can also be used as a basis for a surface determination. The resulting ROI might then look like the one down here. As you can see, segmentation is a fundamental tool that will come in very handy in a wide variety of tasks, so it's worth playing around a bit to get a feel for different approaches to segmentation. Here, we will have a look at how you can create ROIs based on geometrical shapes, as shown in the upper image, on the gray values of voxels, as shown below, or on other objects. Of course, you can always work on the ROIs you've created, but we won't get into that topic in this video. You can find the different selection modes in the Select tab. As you can see, they're already grouped into shape-based and gray value-based modes. We will start with the latter. The method at the top here is region growing with the magic wand icon. It's a very versatile method that allows you to select parts of your data by gray value. If your scan consists of materials that have different gray values, such as these two parts here on the right, you can use that to create ROIs based on gray values. Again, it's very handy to separate parts by material so you can limit your analysis areas or define surfaces for these materials. With the region grower, you will, as the name suggests, do this by using a growing process. First of all, you need a starting point. Your starting point is defined by the voxel you click on in one of the 2D windows. From this voxel, the region of interest will start to grow and the surrounding voxels will be added to the ROI. Now, without boundaries to stop the process, you would end up with a region that includes the entire dataset. Now we can set these boundaries according to the gray value with a specified tolerance. The tolerance is defined by the gray value of the starting point plus or minus the value you set in the dialog. If you click on a voxel with a gray value of 100, for example, and your tolerance is 50, Voxels between gray values of 50 and 150 will be included. If the tolerance is 20, you will include only voxels between 80 and 120. If you need more boundaries than those set by the gray values of the tolerance, you can draw a limiting sphere in 2D or use existing ROIs as borders for the growing process. We will do this towards the end of this video. Sometimes you may want to include all parts of your scan within a certain gray value range in one region of interest, even when they're not connected. Imagine steel screws in an aluminum bike pedal, for example. In this case, gray value range is the way to go, as you can see here on the left. If you want to work more locally, use draw mode and define a gray value interval. We will also do this later. But now it is time to see what the region grower can do in VG Studio Max. Start the software and open the pirate project via file and open 
and select the Pirate VGL in your training datasets. Here he is, our favorite pirate. While the shape of your scanned objects may be very different, you will often encounter similar distributions of gray values. As you can see in the 2D windows, the pirate figure appears to consist of two main materials and a third very bright material here at the map. Now, with segmentation, you usually want to start with the easy parts. Because the material here at the map is very bright, the contrast should be very good, so the region grower should work well. Let's use the region grower by going to Select and choosing the region growing entry in the ROI from gray value drop-down list or by simply clicking directly on the magic wand icon. As with most selection modes, you will not only get a dialog that pops up, but you can also find extra information in the status bar on the bottom left. So if you're not sure what to do or want extra tips and options, have a look. The dialog always comes with a default tolerance. You can use it to see how region growing works. Just click on any voxel in the bright area and have a look at the yellow preview line. As you can see, the area inside the line includes the bright voxels and the growing stopped where the voxels were too dark to still fall within the tolerance. If the line looks alright, confirm by clicking on the red button here. The yellow preview line will turn light blue and you will get a new entry in the scene tree. You've just created your first ROI. Let's add some more. Since the arms of the pirate are nice and big and the contrast to the torso looks good, we can also try to segment the arm that is holding the map. Okay, as you can see, the default tolerance of 64 does not appear to be a good value in this case. We have included too much in the region, so we need to be more careful. Let's try adjusting the tolerance to see what happens. If I make the tolerance smaller, I will include fewer gray values and hopefully not swamp the entire pirate. For those of you who are fans of the navigation cursor, you can use it now to have a look at the gray values of the arm and torso. Or you can just change the tolerance value and see what happens. Maybe half of the original value will do. This already looks much better. If the results of the region growing look about right, you can either tweak the tolerance or click on different voxels to pick a different starting gray value, like this. You may not be able to find the perfect tolerance value and seed point for region growing and will always end up with small holes inside the region or some extra voxels outside your parts of interest. This will be worse in scans that have a lot of noise and artifacts. Don't worry, once you learn to adjust existing ROIs, you will be able to deal with these issues in no time. Once you're happy with your settings for now, click on the lower left button to create your second region of interest. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect yet, because we can improve it later. To keep a better overview, let's rename the ROIs with a right click and rename. I will call them Map and Arm. Great, so you have your first ROIs, but you can only see them as a blue outline in 2D. We should change that. If you highlight an ROI in the scene tree, you will see that rendering is still disabled in the rendering tool. You can enable rendering by clicking on this red ROI rendering button. This brings up a histogram of the ROI with all the options to change the visualization settings for the volumes. We can color the arm by double clicking in the color area at the top of the histogram. I think my pirate is wearing orange. And the map is light yellow. 